Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here. Um, we have a lot of outboard fun here. Um, so, enough of you guys chimed in and said, Save that Suzuki. Get that Suzuki running. So let's do that. Um, I went out in my bone pile and I did find a cobble reaper for it. Um, it's not the best in the world. Hopefully it won't be as bad as the one that came off of it. But you can see it's two-toned. See how the, the bowl is kind of, well, shiny and then you can see the top of it's all frosted and yucky and yummy yuck 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 so we're gonna clean this take it apart first I'm gonna go wash it just regular soap and water on the outside and get that all cleaned up before I pop it open um, and it is the same though and I will clean it up we'll pop it open take a look inside and then see if we can't get this little Suzuki cutie up and run. So let's get at it. I'm gonna let that sit. Um, also, I got a few things going. I'm gonna have to do a uh, oil change on this Honda hydraulic power pack. I got it running and everything, cleaned the car. Um, but I was electric starting it, so I need to tighten that cover bolt. It's all loose. Let's see if it'll start with the manual. so I get the oil a little warm so I drain it out of there. Looking better already. looks pretty good good enough to open up and let's see what the innards look like 
So we'll get to doing that and then I'll get the oil draining on that power pack. I'll be back. Okay, we got the oil draining in that. We'll let her sit there and drain. Let's go over and look at this here. Oh, oh, rip, oh. Here we go. Now, I took the bowl off, and there's some boogers in there. And the hinge pin has uh, got a bunch of boogers there, too. You can see all down here and here. Up to see here and here. But it ain't nothing like that other one. So she's a little dirty, but she'll clean up. But I gotta get that pin out of there. But I think that one will come out without crumbling on me. Overall, not that bad. Okay, so I took the uh, recoil out of the tank. I got the carb cleaned and it's back on. Um, and I clean this up in here and I'm going to put a little geesum in there. And in this case I'm using Lubri Plate 105. Brand new cord. Get out of there. Tie me the overhand knots. See that little cutout? A little cutout there. Where'd I do my screw? What I did. There it is. What I did with it. I did something with it. There it is. I'll call it. I'll call it now. Couple extra wraps. Maybe. Don't do what I just did. Which is lose your rope. That works. Where'd that thing go? Yeah. So, push it back, push it back. I like to put two extra wraps on these. And there's that cutout again. That should be enough, I think. It's in there. But, I'm going to have to get a torch real quick. Because I'm not where I burn it too is too fat. Make it printed. Now it's printed. Now it should feed through. Shoulda woulda coulda 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 shoulda coulda coulda woulda. It's going to do it, I believe. <gasps> I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Now, where's that stupid thing? And if it's doing like that, you take that cut out, 
right there and wrap a few more. Oh, as soon as I get it right there. Get my ropes. Just Let's go one or two more and see if that helps. Get my save me from myself switch out. Come on you, there we go. See what that do this time. That should be about right. And you can see the little doggy paw is out. And when it goes back in, the engine fly will knock it back in. So we're going to hose her down good with little tri-flows. Alright, so let me get this bolter back on. i got to put the handle back on. Wherever I did with it. So I'm going to put that back on. And I'll be back.
this sucker. That bald eagle just caught a muskrat or something out of that ditch right over there. I don't know what he grabbed. He, he flew down in there and grabbed something. He's got it in his little talons right now. There he goes. Couldn't tell what it was. Just a bald eagle thing. Look what I'm getting to do. Yippee. Hey. I'm getting a little tired of working on outboards. So, I was thinking. I'm going to go do a little harbor tour or something. You want to come along with me? Don't that sound good? Let's go. This is looking north. Right from the bridge. On top of the Near Island Bridge, you can see a fishing boat coming in. You can see some of the canneries. Looks like we got a little weather moving in. You can see that boat there. Hopefully you can see the name. Near Island Bridge. Out that way is the Pacific Ocean and Seattle. That's kind of interesting there. Um, you see the one with the maroon stripe there. That's an old bay liner that somebody's taken. And you see that quite a bit up here. And what they'll do is that came with a, an I.O., an inboard outboard on it. And they'll put and build those aluminum or stainless jack plates. And then they'll stick an outboard on the back. In this case, it's a two-stroke Yama. And then where the engine was inside it, probably a... Uh, Mercruiser, they turn that into a fish hole. And you can see those machines there that look like downriggers. Those are called DNG uh, jigging machines. And what the fisherman will do with that boat there is he'll go out and jig rockfish. Uh, maybe others, but I know they mainly use them for rockfish. So you see a lot of that up here, and so what they've done is taken a recreational skiff and turned it into a very small commercial fishing boat. Now, if you look right across from it there, that other boat, that one's just come out of, out of hibernation somewhere. You can see all the mold and mildew and everything on it. <laughs> so that one just got back in the water. Somebody just put that one back in the water. I think I know where that boat was sitting before it uh, ended up back in the water, but it's good to see somebody has at least got it up and floating. And that's a cute little boat there. That boat's been, um, I don't know what kind of boat that originally was, but it's been passed around here for quite a while. Um, it is as well a conversion of some kind of boat into a commercial fishing boat it almost looks at one point that like that hull might have been a sailboat but i'm not familiar with it but i know that that boat just recently sold for six thousand dollars i heard it has a little bitty 
three-cylinder diesel in it. And it's got enough little cabin there to keep a person out of the weather. And then it's got an operating station up forward. And I'm sure right there, center hole somewhere, some kind of fish hole. And I don't know what's up in the, the bow peak there, if that's storage or some bunks. I'm not sure. But it, it just recently sold. I think it was for 6000 well, That's a neat little boat. That's a whole bunch of boat on a trailer there. Nice trailer, though. Aluminum. A-frame, triple axle. Here's another one of these bow pickers. Cordova boats. It's also on a very nice trailer. So you've got a nice aluminum trailer, and you've got another nice aluminum trailer. And then you've got... Oops. Look at that trailer. You can see, you can see the cross beams up under it that were holding the bow up. Rotted completely in two. And down she went. Yeah. Yeah, not, not so nice a trailer. Not so nice a boat, really. Almost looks like it's been in a fire or something, but I don't think so. I think that's just the old Kodiak mold. Been sitting so long. And we got this thing here. It looks like a Mako or a Grady White almost. With quite the paint job. Yeah. You can see there's a lot of empty stalls because it is go get the fish season. Yep, a lot of the boats are out on the fishing ground. Beautiful evening, though. This is up at the uh, north end of Dog Bay Harbor. This is where most of the uh, smaller boats, recreational boats, charter boats, and all tie up. see Barometer Mountain way off in the distance there. Boats, boats, and more Oats. Sam and Sane are heading into town to unload. And there's another one coming in. Got the snag skiff or Sane skiff on the back deck.
Well, looky there. Um, we got this little Suzuki running. It's a runner. Um, so a couple of tips on these older DT two-stroker Suzukis. Remember what I said about the spark. They will run on um, that spark that you can test with one of those adjustables. You only need a little over a sixteenth of an inch and it'll spark. And if you put it on a standard, you know, quarter inch gap OMC type spark checker, you won't see the spark. At least that's what I found with them and I've done dozens of them. And, uh, and so it was through trial and error and a lot of patience that I learned it did that. So I'm passing it on so that you don't shoot your Suzuki. That's what I'm doing. But uh, good runner, but uh, something that you guys probably couldn't see that I was doing as I was running that motor in the very end is I would watch the level in the fuel filter, which is all cattywunk sideways in there. Um, that's how I got it. It needs to be turned around and put upright and a bolt or a nut put on top of it. But uh, I noticed that every few minutes I would have to reach down and squeeze the primer bulb because it would slowly drain. It would reach a point where it drained most of the fuel out of the bowl on the carb and then it would start draining the um, fuel filter there and I would reach down and squeeze the bulb and fill the fuel filter back up and it would run. What does that mean? It means the diaphragms in that cabarepa are shot. They're stiff and barely working. That's what it means. So uh, that carb will need to come back off. I will need to get um, a set of diaphragms in that fuel pump or I could bypass that fuel pump altogether with a fuel pump off the off the cylinder block itself so I will do one of those two but it needs that what else does it need the thing is just filthy and if you saw when it was running it would out of the telltale it would pee some and then quit pee some that's salt um, it's just it's full of salt really I should pull the head off of it clean the passages out of it and uh, and definitely get out the old garden hose and sick on that thing with some soap and give it a bath it needs one it's filthy inside uh, everything's crusty and salty but it does run good um, seems to be a noisy little two-stroke but I actually pulled the recoil off of it while it was running uh, to make sure there was nothing dangling down in that recoil causing it to be as loud as it was but it, it's not recoil on recoil off it just seems to be a clackety old noisy little thing but uh, sure runs good now but needs a lot of cosmetic and a lot of cleaning and We'll get to that, but uh, I got one more little motor outboard that I got to get in here for a customer and get that taken care of. And I've got a, a rototilla that I got to take care of. Um, got the little Honda Power Pack running up good, oil change, carbs cleaned, everything's done, gas tanks drained, new fresh gas, yada, yada, yada. You don't care about that, do you? But anyway, we got that all done, so I've got a little bitty cutie. Little bitty 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 little bitty cutie coming in here. And uh, it needs a little work for sure, but we're going to get it in here and straighten that little puppy out. It's an older motor. It's an Evan Rude, and it's a cutie. So we'll get that in here and get it taken care of. And then I got a whole bunch of my own motors that I want to get to so I hope to get on that and uh, but that's gonna be a wrap on this one and as always thank you for watching and that's one more hat from Kodiak thanks for watching
Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.